Edmonds Underwater Park is a protected marine park located next to a ferry dock. It is shallow and easy to navigate, making it a popular spot for scuba divers. During winter, the best slack tides are in the early morning. Getting up early in the cold is certainly worth it, as this time of year, with the reduced sunlight, the plankton content of the water is really low, allowing for maximum visibility. Because the algae growth is so low in winter, the wildlife, if it is there, is all out in the open. Even in less than 10 feet of water, there is life to be found, like this anemone. Past the low tide line, the diversity of animals increases. One of the most prominent is the giant plumose anemone. They can be found individually or in dense colonies. The park is full of purposefully sunk boats and other objects, like these pipes, which create scaffolding for many life forms and a safe place for fish to hide. Here is a chitin, and just over here to the side is a relative, the noble sea lemon, a type of nudibranch or sea slug. Hiding amongst the encrusting algae and barnacles is a rock scallop. They are well camouflaged, but can be spotted when their shells are open to feed. Buoys mark out paths in the park, and their anchor points are hot spots for wildlife. Even though these anemones are all different colors, they are clones of a single anemone who started the colony. These squatter and more robust painted anemones can catch prey as large as small fish. Another common anemone here is the buried green anemone. The green color is not produced by symbiotic algae like some other species. Instead, it's just produced by the anemone itself. Because of this, they can range in color from bright green to a dull brown. Despite being a no-fishing zone, the Dungeness crabs here are still quite skittish. They grow big and have strong claws, but most prefer to run away when they see an approaching diver. Occasionally, you'll find one that doesn't seem to care as much.
When the tide is in, hermit crabs come out of their hiding places between the rocks. They carefully pick through the sand, looking for tiny food particles. It's not a glamorous lifestyle, but it cleans up after other creatures' messy eating habits. Northern kelp crabs are possibly the most common sight here. The males can get quite large, up to three and a half inches across the carapace, much longer counting the legs and claws. Unlike the Dungeness crabs, they do not run away and prefer to stand their ground. Winter is the beginning of the breeding season for these crabs, and males will jealously guard a female, even from scuba divers. Dude, I don't want your lady. I found a dead female where you can see where she had kept her eggs tucked away on her underside. The eggs would have clung to those filaments. I attempted to open the back of the carapace, and since I couldn't, it meant she was dead and not just a molted shell. Being a no-fishing zone, the park has many fish in it all year round. Rainbow perch swim in schools, disappearing into the distance as swiftly as they arrive. As a prey species, they are naturally wary. But if you are calm and patient, they may relax enough to ignore you and feed. The rockfish mostly move into deeper waters in winter, but a few hang around. Certainly the most impressive fish around here is the ling cod. Protected parks like Edmonds are the places to see these large fish. Where fishing is allowed, these long-lived predators are more often than not caught long before reaching full size. I wouldn't be surprised if the vast majority of the breeding populations of this species are only found in no fishing zones. Males are the ones to guard the eggs, and they do so aggressively. Here you can see the white egg mass in the Y of the sign. If I were to get too close, that male would certainly charge and chase me away. I watch their body language and try to maintain a respectful distance if I can, but sometimes their eggs are hidden well.
The larger females take no part in caring for their eggs. Females can reach up to 5 feet in length and weigh up to 100 pounds. The females in the shallow waters at Edmonds are quite used to divers and are not easily spooked. This makes them quite photogenic when the visibility is good. This large female was just snapped at by a male who is probably guarding their eggs. She is not happy and pursues him. She then bites him to teach him a lesson. Makes me very glad the females are not aggressive towards divers. Despite the recent devastating wave of a mysterious sea star wasting disease, healthy adult oka stars can still be found, albeit fewer than there used to be. The hardest hit species was the sunflower star. Once commonly seen as big as two to three feet across, I now only find a few hand-sized individuals, even in a protected area. I hope I will someday get to see these large predators in their full glory once again. Thanks for watching and please subscribe for more videos.